In inverse kinematics, the end effector refers to the hand area of the limb. I've set up this example in Desmos to illustrate how you can set up a IK solver pretty simply. This IK solver assumes that all joint lengths are going to be equal and that there's specifically two joints, so the elbow and the shoulder. It's as simple as you define the limb length and you define the distance and you pass it into this arccos. You multiply the length by two where the length is the individual limb length. So in total, that's a length of 10. You pass that into the arccos function, you get an angle, and then you can convert that angle and the length over to Cartesian coordinates. So as long as you know how to convert polar coordinates into Cartesian coordinates, this should be pretty simple using this sort of configuration. In this case, it's assumed that the angle of the end effector is zero. Here I'm always using radians. So if you'll notice, if the angle of the arm was instead 90 degrees or 0.5 pi radians, then the elbow would be correspondingly offset by that amount. You would add it in later like this. And now my end effector is off, but as you can see, if I just swap these around, then I get the correct position for everything. If you want the arm to bend the other way, then you just negate the angle instead. Just to be absolutely clear how this works, I'll set up a new vector and do the math for the end effector position, so the hand position. As you can see here, this time when we're converting the polar coordinates over to the, get the hand's Cartesian position, we use just the angle, not the elbow angle, which is what is described up here. We use just the angle of the arm, and we multiply it by the distance this time instead of the length. Another thing we do here is before we calculate the elbow angle, we can just get the angle for the arm. I'm going to constrain the angle in Desmos between 0 and 2 pi. Now you can see here nothing's hard coded, but we are able to do the inverse kinematics at any angle. Here in Desmos, the thing is, I'm able to constrain the distance. So here I made sure that the distance is never greater than twice the length of an, in, of an individual segment. So if you see, when you're doing your arccos calculation, you don't want to pass anything above 1 in here or below negative 1. And if you divide by 0, you're going to get an undefined error. Or I guess in code you'd probably get a not a number, or something like that. Another thing is, if the distance is too high, if it's greater than twice the length of an individual link, then you'll also get an error. So here it's undefined, and everything disappears. The same thing will probably happen in your code. So what you have to do is constrain the position of the end effector, and you should also just check to see if arccos returns undefined. In code, you can just check to see if the angle equals itself. And if it doesn't equal itself, then you know it's not a number. And you should just return zero in that case. So here's another example. I'm using what look like more complex equations here, but these are just the standard equations for analytical inverse kinematics. And also I have variable limb sizes here. So you can see that the limb lengths are asymmetric. The problem that's posed here is that the limb can't bend that far when the link lengths are asymmetrical like this. So you have to constrain, constrain the minimum distance 
and the maximum distance. And another thing is I get these little flickers. And I think this happens because of floating point precision. So at some point you're just going to pass in your numbers into an arc coast somewhere and it's going to return zero. So you can see here everything disappeared. If you verify in code that it's not a number, you just want to return zero. So if I just delete that, you can see the first link is pointing in the right direction. And this only really happens when the angle of the elbow vector should be zero anyways. I would recommend if you're getting into IK to start with, you should use a regular link setup and just do it analytically the way I've shown you here. And this way you'll at least understand the math. If you've taken a trigonometry class, unlike me, then you could probably use these functions, but um, I would recommend that once you write them, you make sure to reuse them and just be careful while you're using them. Or if you're advanced, um, you could probably use the law of cosines, go through the steps in the law of cosines and try to work out this expression yourself. So I'll link this paper along with my Desmos graphs in the description. This paper basically just talks about a ton of inverse kinematics techniques. You probably don't want to go into a lot of these. You should just look at page 3 and read page 4. Page 4 is where I got these equations, and they're fairly simple. You just have to remember that in this scenario it assumes that the base starts at 0. So when you're converting your angles, for your segment positions, you basically have to convert from local space back into world space, which I guess would be the position of your character onto all of your vector calculations or something like that. I haven't tested it, but I would assume this is the fastest way to do this sort of inverse kinematics analytical setup. Or also there's probably a computational benefit to assuming that the L1 and L2 are equal like I did in my first example. I don't end up using this solution very often, but I probably would recommend Fabric as an alternative. I think Fabric stands for forwards and backwards reaching inverse kinematics. If you know how to rotate vectors and you know how to write for loops, then this is actually like a really simple approach to doing it. There's not a lot of math involved apart from those two things. and the advantage to it is it allows you to use a ton of different lengths. You can have different numbers of limb segments. And then later on, you'll be able to implement joint constraints. Unless you're programming an octopus arm, you probably don't want limb segments to bend in the same direction. You want them probably to bend one way, bend the other, and then bend the other way. Kind of like how a dog limb might bend. 